I'm Fred Cass. I'm a medical oncologist. I've been at the Cancer Center for almost 30 years. With three full-time genetic counselors, we're really one of the premier genetic counseling programs in the state of California. Because I'm an Ashkenazi Jew, genetic counseling has been very beneficial for me and hopefully for others because we are then able to get tested for a gene and by getting tested, I'm able to be proactive with my health. One becomes a genetic counselor, we go through a master's program for genetic counseling, where we are trained both in medical genetics and then also in counseling. For us here at the Cancer Center, we work directly with people who have either a personal or family history of cancer. Typically what a genetic counseling session might look like would be starting with taking a patient's personal medical history and then moving to look at the family history as well. It's very important that we ask questions about both mom and dad side of the family as both sides are important. Taking those two in combination often helps us assess what might be happening in the family and if hereditary cancer is a possibility. We're looking to find families who may not realize that they have inherited a risk for the disease. We think that this is not only an issue of treating patients who have been diagnosed with cancer, but reaching out to our friends and neighbors to help them prevent the occurrence of cancer in their families. That's a hugely important part of our program. Only about 5 to 10 percent of all cancer is going to be what we consider hereditary or caused by a specific change in a gene that's being passed down through the family. And so those gene changes, they can cause an increased chance to develop cancer. For the most part, it's not a 100% chance to develop cancer. And the reason that we want to identify families who maybe have a hereditary cancer condition is so that way we can reduce that chance to develop cancer and we can offer any preventative options. So there are certain ancestries that we think about for certain hereditary cancer conditions with an example being the Ashkenazi Jewish population or Eastern European Jewish population. When we know that someone is Ashkenazi Jewish and has breast cancer, that makes us a little bit more suspicious for hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. When we think about hereditary breast cancer, there are two genes that are the most common causes of an increased risk for breast cancer. Those two genes are called BRCA1 and BRCA2. While we know that in the general population there's about a 1 in 400 chance to have a BRCA1 or BRCA2 a gene change or mutation, we know that in certain ancestries this chance can be higher. And one ancestry that we know of is Ashkenazi Jewish or Eastern European ancestry. If someone is of that particular ancestry, then they actually have a 1 in 40 chance of having a mutation in a BRCA1 or 2 gene. This is not necessarily a high chance to each person. You know, 1 in 40 means that there's still close to a 98% chance that that individual won't have a mutation. However, if there's something going on in the family that may be indicative of a possible increased risk such as breast cancer in the family at any age or ovarian cancer, then a referral would be important to consider for genetic counseling. Knowing about ancestry can be really helpful in the setting of genetic counseling just because it, it tells us if someone might be at a higher chance of having a specific hereditary cancer condition and that would make us more prone to offer genetic testing. Genetic counseling really helped facilitate us getting tested in the first place. And by getting tested, I found out that I was a BRCA carrier. And by doing so, I was able to take proactive steps. And it, in essence, could have saved my life and probably did save my life.